Folks, in just a, a moment, we're going to be introducing the uh, secretary. The next uh, three uh, of our speakers are uh, are going to be uh, okay. Go going to be here shortly. Okay. Go ahead with the okay. <coughs> now it's my pleasure to welcome Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar. Since 2009, while serving in this capacity, Secretary Salazar has been committed to upholding the government-to-government -government relationship with tribes and working to help support tribal prosperity. Prior to his confirmation, uh, Secretary Salazar served as Colorado's 35th U.S. Senator. As Senator, Salazar was a leader in creating and implementing a vision for a renewable energy economy that is less dependent on foreign oil. He's been a champion for farmers, ranchers, and rural communities, leading efforts to pass the 2007 Farm Bill and to create food and fuel security for America. And he is a true friend to Indian country. Please help me welcome Secretary Ken Salazar. He's coming. He's, here. <laughs> okay. He's on his way. We're going to count down. Grand Ten. And you <laughs> Nine and a half. Three, two, one. Please help me welcome Secretary Ken Salazar. How's everybody this morning? Good. Good. You're all good? Let me, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for being here and for uh, making sure that uh, the hope and promise of uh, the nation's first Americans and uh, Alaska Natives is never, ever forgotten. And it's a National <laughs> Congress of American Indians. that brings that voice across this country from sea to shining sea and into Alaska and really across the entire world when we talk about the rights and issues of indigenous people. And so to your leadership, uh, to Jefferson Keel, to all the members who are up here on the panel with me who I have worked so diligently with now for four years and to all of you who are here, I just want to say thank you uh, for all the work that you have done. Now let me say that uh, from the very beginning when uh, President Obama asked me if I would leave the United States Senate to come and become your Secretary of Interior. It was very clear that the President and I agreed that we needed a new energy future for the United States of America. It was clear that we wanted to work on a 21st conservation agenda. But it was very crystal clear that Barack Obama wanted me to make sure that I was working with Indian country to develop a nation-to-nation -nation relationship that respected the sovereignty of Indian nations and that made sure that we did everything in partnership with all of you to empower Native Americans and Alaska Natives so that you too can be very much a part of the American dream. 
and so that you too can make sure that you can have confidence that the legacy of America's history of broken promises is now something of the past and that we can look forward to a new beginning where the United States of America will uphold its sacred covenant to assuring that the, there is a bright future for first Americans across this country. Now I will say that as I work on these issues, one of the things that you all here are very cognizant of is the fact that when you have empty seats in the Department of Interior, that things can't get done. Because when you don't have an Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs or a Director of the Bureau of Indian Education or a Chairperson of NIGC or any other functions of the, of the government, the government basically grinds to a halt. And so we have been honored that from all across the United States of America, we've had some of the great leaders in Indian country that have helped us move forward with uh, so many of the issues that we work on today. And they include people like Larry Echohawk, who spent three years, the Native Pawnee and the Echohawk family who have brought so much to recognizing the rights of Indian country. They include the Deputy Assistant Secretary, Del Lavader from, from the Crow Nation, who hel who's helped us reform so many things in Indian country. Mike Black, the Director of the Bureau of Indian uh, Affairs, who has now brought us to records in terms of what we're doing in the recognition and the restoration of, of tribal homelands. Tracy Stevens, who runs the uh, National Indian Gaming Commission as a chairman and all the rest of the members of that commission. Uh, Kim Tihi, who worked in the White House until just a few months ago, and now who was succeeded by someone who came to work with me, who, who did a wonderful job by the name of Jody Gillette. Brian Drapo, who now runs our Bureau of Indian Education and is working on reform efforts in the Bureau of Indian Education. And last but not least, I want to say a special welcome here to the National Congress of American Indians to a person who Barack Obama said, we want the very best to make sure that we have the Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs continuing to hit home runs every day. And that's your new Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs, Kevin Washburn. Kevin, where are you? I'm gonna say a few more words about Kevin in a few minutes, but uh, let me also just say thank you to the members of the Tribal Trust Reform Commission, which uh, we created as part of a secretarial order in uh, putting together the settlement on Cobell. And uh, the Tribal Trust Reform Commission is doing a lot to help us make sure that we get it right. And that's uh, to the great chairperson of that Tribal Trust Reform Commission, Fon Sharp, uh, to Peterson Za, to Tex Hall, uh, to Bob Anderson and to Stacy Leeds, thank them for me, for the work that they're doing on behalf of all of Indian country on trust reform. Now, let me say that uh, we always, when we talk about matters relating to Indian country, need to recognize that we need to be honest about the framework that we're dealing with. And that framework is that for a very long time, for four centuries plus, uh, the United States of America does not have a great legacy in dealing with Indian country. The fact of the matter is, when you think about those who are the most dispossessed, those who have been uh, so oppressed and so discriminated against, uh, it is the first Americans of this country. And so when we talk about a civil rights agenda that's an inclusive agenda that says that we are about all of humanity, we need to make sure that the indigenous people, the Alaska Natives, and the Native American peoples of the United States of America are respected because they deserve to be respected. That's a promise that Barack Obama made to you before he was President of the United States. It's a promise that I have tried to carry out on your behalf for the last four years. Now, how have we done that? How have we done that as a presidential priority? I'm going to review a few things that I think will demonstrate to you at least some of our work. Our work is not yet finished. Uh, it is a tough thing to undo many chapters and centuries of a very painful history. But I do believe that we are making history. First, on uh, the restoration of tribal homelands. When I became Secretary of Interior, Larry Echohawk and I called in the 
regional directors of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And I asked them, what is it that we're doing in taking uh, applications of uh, land into trust? And I was basically told by most of the regional directors that we had a, the, the prior administration had a, had, had a de facto moratorium in place. I was told the story that at some point one of the leaders in Interior said to them, well, why don't you bring us the top 10 applications or the top dozen applications and we'll review them and we'll see what we can do. So they went and they brought the, for the, their top 12 applications and when they sat down for their meeting, the person at Interior told them, well, if it was up to us, we would do zero. But we know you want to do a few of them, so we'll let you do three or four of them. Well, during 2007 and 2008, there were a total of 17 applications that were actually processed. That was all. That was all. And my regional directors coming in from the BIA basically said that was the essential direction that they had been given by the prior administration. Well, I sat down with those regional directors and I said, that's not your job. Your job is to do your job. You get paid to do a job. You get paid to process these applications. So under the great leadership of Larry Echohawk and Del Lavador, what we have done in the last four years is we now have processed nearly 1,000 applications of fee into trust lands in our efforts to restore tribal homelands. Now that's about 180,000 acres. And yes, it's for economic development like the Fort Berthold refinery that I'll speak about in just a minute. Or it's about uh, educational facilities or it's about agricultural facilities or other activities that will allow Native American communities to be able to create economic empowerment within, <laughs> within their ranks. We also have moved forward with uh, the Trust Reform Commission to figure out how we can do a better job because the truth of it is that there's a lot to be fixed. It was a mess when we came in, and we're not finished yet. There's still a big mess that we need to clean up. But through the great members of the Trust Reform Commission, I have a great sense that we'll be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish in reforming our trust reform efforts. Now, some people said that the Cobell was an issue which uh, essentially was something that I should stay away from. They said, as Secretary of Interior, your job is to continue to fight Eloise Cobell and Indian country because this is a litigation which the United States of America will win because Eloise Cobell and the people that she represents are wrong. Well, my view was that there had been wrongs by the United States of America and that we needed to right those wrongs. And so the great leadership, through the great leadership of Eloise Cobell and the people who were involved in that case, and my Solicitor General, Hillary Tompkins, who I'm proud to say is the first Native American to ever hold the title of Solicitor General in the United States Department of Interior today. And David J. Hayes, my Deputy Secretary, who hits home runs every day on matters relating to Indian country. And Eric Holder, the United States Attorney General for Barack Obama. We were able to bring forward a settlement on the Cobell litigation. Now, some people said it couldn't happen. Even after we had the settlement done and we were working to try to get it to the Congress, there were those who said, no way that you'll be able to get the Congress to pass the Settlements Claims Act. And yeah, because NCAI was there, you were all there with us, we were able to get it done. And so now, Cobell has great promise for us keeping the voice of Eloise Cobell so eloquently alive. That $3.4 billion settlement, yes, will go to compensate those who were wronged by those past injustices of the United States. But in addition to that, under Fond's leadership and others, we'll be able to move forward with uh, dealing with the issue of fractionated interests and apply about $2 billion of that effort to make sure that we have the kind of restoration of tribal ho homelands that really uh, works on behalf of Indian people. But we didn't stop there. I remember having a meeting with uh, Eloise at a point in the negotiations where she came into my office and it seemed like the settlement was going to fall apart. It seems that the lawyers were arguing. I had been to court on two different occasions to speak to the judge and to speak to the parties, but it seemed that we weren't going to be able to pull it all together. And so she came in and we had a conversation, the lawyers and me and others who were involved. 
And we said, you know, one of the things that's going to be most important for Indian country and for its future is education. And so under the Cobell settlement, we've actually set aside what will be a $60 million fund to provide education for scholarships for Native Americans for higher education. So that's also part of Eloise Cobell's legacy in that Cobell litigation. Now we haven't stopped there because Cobell involved the individual trust accounts, but we also had cases that had been filed by tribes from around the country. Well, I'm proud to say that 50 plus of those cases have now been resolved. Over a billion dollars has actually flowed out to tribes around the country. Again, part of our efforts to right the wrongs of history. And there's still more work to be done on those fronts. We also have worked hard, as the President has directed us, to make sure that we create new opportunities for Indian country and for Alaska Natives, knowing that jobs and economic development are important to all of America, but certainly important to tribal nations and Native Americans, where every day is a struggle, a struggle with rampant uh, unemployment rates that have been going on in some places since time immemorial. And so creating new economic opportunity for tribal nations has been a key part of our work. And on that front, I'd like to just address a couple of points. One is uh, energy. Many of the tribes, not all, but many, are blessed with uh, huge natural resources and uh, energy resources uh, that create new promise for the United States of America. So last uh, two weeks ago, I was at the three affiliated tribes where this was my third visit to the Fort Berthold area in North Dakota, where I have seen a complete change take place relative to the development of the oil and gas resources at the three affiliated tribes. So I sat there with Tex Hall, we were reminiscing that it was with Senator Byron Dorgan and Senator Con Con Conrad that I'd gone there more than three years ago at a time when the development was taking place all around the reservation, but there was zero development inside of the reservation. Today now, there are over 300 wells that are actually producing oil and gas on the Fort Berthold Reservation because we fixed the permitting process, which had been broken for far, so, for, for far too long. But at the same time, while I was there with Tex and the Tribal Council, what we did was I signed the record of decision that allowed the three affiliated tribes to move forward to build the first oil and gas refinery in the history of the United States on Indian lands. The very first in the history of the United States. And the very first in the United States overall in the lower 48 in the last 40 years. In the last 40 years. And I know there are many other tribes that are taking advantage of the oil and gas resources underneath their lands. But in addition to that, we need to make sure that Indian country is very much a part of the President's all of the above energy strategy. Yes, it's important that we develop our oil and gas resources, and we've done a tremendous amount of that at the national level, both <coughs> onshore and offshore. But it's also important that we harness the power of the sun and the power of the wind and the power of geothermal. And so, yes, in Nevada with uh, the Moapa uh, tribe, the Moapa K project, we were able to move forward, the Moapa Band of Paiutes, to authorize what is the first commercial scale solar energy project on public lands. 350 megawatts that will be built there in Nevada, and the Moapa Band will celebrate not only the economic successes, but the fact that they're also part of this new energy future for the United States of America. I was proud when I went two years ago to a meeting that we actually had in Phoenix because it seemed like this project was stuck. It seemed like nobody was trying to move it forward. And so we created a strike force of people within the Department of Interior to get it across the finish line. And my hope is that when you look at solar energy or geothermal or wind, that across the United States of America on those tribal homelands where we have rich wind or rich solar or rich energy, that you are front and center in the new energy future for the United States of America. So follow what we are doing there because we want to work with you, nation to nation, hand in hand, as we capture this new energy future for the United States. Now, I want to talk about water for just a minute because I know how important it is in the spiritual life and in the history 
of Native Americans. But even as important as it is in that cultural and spiritual way for all of us who know that it's really the lifeblood of who we are, it's also important to recognize that there are still huge issues that we have faced out there with water supplies for Indian country and that it is about people's livelihood and about economic development. And so I'm proud that through the United States Department of Interior with the strong backing and leadership of President Obama, we've been able to sign off on more water rights settlements and have them funded than at any time in the history of the United States of America. And so yes, when I went to the Crow Nation in Montana and I met with the Crow in Montana, I was proud to say that that $300 million plus project will finally get built after decades and decades of waiting. When I went to New Mexico and I was there at the Taos Pueblo and visited other Pueblos, met with all the Pueblo governors, I was proud to say that we now have a settlement after almost 50 years of litigation that will actually resolve the issues relating to water supply for those Pueblos. When I was at the Navajo Reservation and when I was at uh, Gallup and we were doing the groundbreaking there, I was proud to say for that for the first time, for the first time in history, that water will be flowing in a pipeline from the San Juan River to the Navajo Nation and to those who have been deprived of their water rights for so long. We have a long ways to go still. There are other settlements that we have worked on. There's more that we are working on and more that we'll work on in the future. But I'm proud of the work that we have done there as well. Finally, on just economic development and uh, some of our recovery programs, I want to say that when I came into office as Secretary of Interior, the President had said it's important that Indian Country be included in the Recovery Act. And so Indian Country was included in the Recovery Act in a whole host of different ways. I'll just point out one. One was uh, for the first time in history, what we did was we pushed forward the funding of about $300 million that went into 100 school projects which are now benefiting about 18,000 Native American students across the country. That's the first time that Indian country gets included in any kind of recovery legislation for the United States of America. I've been in some of these schools across uh, Arizona and the Dakotas and other places across the country, and I know they're still not there where they ought to be, that there's still a lot of work to be done, but the fact is that we have put our shoulder behind it to try to cure some of the deficiencies that were there. We'll also say that the budgets for BIA uh, have not taken a second-class role in the Department of Interior that there are other agencies in my department, frankly, that have been, had to take on much more of the burden of the fiscal uh, consequence of these times, in large part because we know that Indian country budgets have been shorted. And so you'll find from the President uh, strong support for the budgets for uh, BIA and BIE and the rest of the functions that relate to, to Indian country. And finally, on uh, reform on education, uh, I'm not sure that a Secretary of Education and a Secretary of Interior have in recent times had the kind of relationship that Arne Duncan and I have. But for many meetings now, we have sat together, both at the United States Department of Education and at my office at Interior, where we talked about how we need to work much more closely together. And it is a high priority for Kevin Washburn and for uh, Brian uh, Pro as we move forward to try to make sure that uh, we have the right kind of educational opportunity for Indian country. Uh, public safety, I want to say just a word about that. Uh, we know that there has been a huge challenge that we face on public safety issues across Indian country and among Alaska Natives, and so we are trying to do a better job on that. We, through the President's leadership, through the great support of the National Congress of American Indians, we're able to pass the Tribal Law and Order Act, and the President had the honor of signing that with many of you in the White House. So we're very proud of that. We also, through the Bureau of, of Indian Affairs, uh, prioritized uh, law enforcement in terms of our hiring practices. We have the largest hiring increases in BIA law enforcement in the history of the BIA. And one statistic which uh, always jumps out at me, I was told when I came to Interior that our big problem was that we couldn't get people to apply for these jobs, that we simply couldn't get them into the funnel to hire them. 
Well, today, because of the leadership, again, of Larry Echohawk and Mike Black and Del Labrador, we have about a 500% increase in the number of applicants who are seeking these law enforcement jobs. And you will see the difference across Indian country. <laughs> Finally, some people have said that on law enforcement and public safety that uh, there's only limited things that can be done. Well, we believe that there are huge things that can be done. We believe in dreaming big dreams and then making them happen. And so at Standing Rock and the Wind River and the Mescalero Apache and Rocky Boy, we put together a strike team of people that went in there with a community policing program for some of the most violent reservations in the country. And in a matter of a few years, violent crime has been brought down, not 5%, not 10%, but over 35% in those four reservations alone in the last four years. We know that they are a great example to what we can do in other reservations, and so this year we will add San Carlos and Rosebud to those high priority initiatives, and God willing, we'll be able to have additional resources to be able to move forward and to have those kinds of law enforcement efforts uh, spread to other places where we have significant uh, law enforcement issues. Tribal consultation, you know, it is not always perfect, but it is uh, the role of government to make sure that the United States is consulting with your governments, with your nations. It's a high priority of President Obama's. Now for three years in a row, and hopefully for a fourth year in a row, he will bring together the leadership of uh, the tribal uh, America and Alaska Natives, as he has done the last few years at Interior and at the White House. And one of the things that we will talk about is to make sure that the whole of government is there, that my fellow members of the cabinet of the United States are there so that we have that kind of a consultation. But it can't end just there at the top among the cabinet officers. It's something that has to be done in the day-to-day -day functioning of all of the government. And so the president has directed his departments to make sure that we engage in a robust consultation efforts uh, with Indian country on all of the matters that we are involved in. Well, there's still a lot more to do. You know, we have leasing regulations that uh, haven't been updated for over 50 years. Del Lavador and Byron and Brian and so many of the people who work with me in Indian Affairs have been working on that effort. We hope to get those done here by the end of the year because they need to get done. On education, we know what the statistics are in Indian country. Uh, we need to do a lot better on that, and it is a high priority uh, for both uh, Kevin and, uh, and for Brian. On economic development, we have done a good amount of work. There's still obviously a huge amount of work that needs to be done in Indian country. On water issues, we have huge issues all over the country still that we need to bring about to some kind of resolution from Oklahoma to Arizona to so many other places. And we continue to work diligently on those issues with my personal involvement and the leadership of uh, my deputy secretary. And uh, other matters that uh, require the United States Congress to act. Uh, for example, one of the things that we have been fighting for so hard for the last uh, several years is a fix to Carcieri, because Carcieri was a wrong-headed decision by the United States Supreme Court. It essentially created a circumstance where you have two classes of tribes in the United States of America. We don't believe that that's what those laws intended back in the 1930s and we will do everything we can to fix it with your help. We need to have that car cherry fixed, and we need to get it done as quickly as we can. Uh, let me conclude by saying all this. I was in a meeting uh, a little earlier with, uh, with Gail and, and, and with AC. As they were, they, what, what, I think AC asked me a question. Well, what are your uh, most memorable times as uh, Secretary of Interior in terms of uh, Indian country. Well, I have many. Uh, I've been all over this country and up into Alaska many different times. But I said it's the kinds of stories, like the ones that I get to see and places that I get to go, such as the meeting that I had with uh, Tex Hall and the Tribal Council at Fort Berthold just uh, two weeks ago. I went there, yes, North Dakota, way up where we're seeing the Bakken formation bring about a new energy future for the United States of America. And as I sat there with Tex Hall in his office and then in the Tribal Council headquarters, there's a photograph there of a Secretary of Interior signing a document 
with the tribal council around the secretary's desk. The chairman of the three affiliated tribes had a handkerchief over his face as he was wiping his tears. That day, as Tex Hall introduced me and as we were getting ready to sign that record of decision on the refinery at Fort Berthold, Tex said, we've come a long ways. He said, from this photograph with the Secretary of Interior, where the tribal chair was signing that document with a heavy heart, and the quote under the photograph said, we signed this with a heavy heart because we are giving our land away. He said, we've come a long ways from that picture in 1949 to today, where the United States government is taking land into trust to have us secure our own future as the three affiliated tribes. And I thought, what an amazing change it makes who you have in leadership at the highest levels of the United States of America. Because it was not only the tribal chair who had that handkerchief over his uh, face as the documents were being signed with the Secretary of Interior on giving away the land that built the uh, Garrison Dam Diversion Works. It was also Tex Hall's grandfather who was part of that tribal council. And now Tex, in moving forward to securing that independence for, that, for the three affiliated tribes, was saying, we have come a long ways in that time. A second story I told to AC was that I was to AC and to Gale. I remember being at the Navajo uh, water supply pipeline groundbreaking just uh, in the last year with uh, Senator Jeff Bingaman and Senator Tom Udall and uh, the Navajo Nation leadership and the leadership of the Hikaria Apache tribe as well. And there, what we were doing was doing the groundbreaking on the Navajo water supply pipeline, which will, for the first time, bring water to over 200,000 people. People who have had to haul their water, sometimes from 50 and 60 miles away, who have not had the sustainability of a water supply, who had water rights in the San Juan River, but somehow there was never the ability to build the pipeline to get the water to them. Well, now, not only the children, but the people who live on the Navajo reservation, they will have access to clean water supply. So it is those things that, to me, make what I do as Secretary of Interior a job that I do with passion. For us, as American citizens, we believe in the President's agenda that we are all in this together that we ought not to be in a position where any part of the United States of America is second class or third class. It's a, an agenda that says that no matter who you are and no matter who you, where you are from, no matter what the color of your skin, no matter what your history is, you are part of God's creation. And as part of God's creation, your creator has entitled you to the great pursuit of happiness and to this dream that you find here in this country. You know, I think about the military veterans who are here today, who are all from Indian country, who have fought in, all, in, in many of the wars, whether it's the Navajo code talkers or those who are now fighting in Afghanistan today. Those from Indian country who have been some of our greatest leaders for this American democracy. We owe it to them. We owe it to all of you. This is not a question, really, of whether we ought to do it. From the President's point of view and my point of view, it is a moral imperative, a moral necessity of the United States of America that we stand up for Indian country and Alaska Natives, and that we do it on a government-to-government -government relationship, that we recognize the sovereignty that is yours, that your children and your grandchildren are entitled to live up to the best possibilities that the Creator has given to all of them. And for me, as your Secretary of Interior for the last four years, that will always be a crown jewel of my time. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We have a small token of our
me see. I got a little uh, gift here. Look at this. He's well. The nice postcards. And this is a. It's a great, great set of photographs from across Indian country and. Uh, a uh, notebook from the National Congress of American Indians. Thank you very much, Jefferson. I Thank appreciate you. it very much. Let me, if, can I introduce I Kevin? You. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. We'd love. Okay. So uh, let me, uh, at this point, just uh, take a few minutes to introduce uh, Kevin Washburn. Yeah, uh, when I recruited Larry Echohawk to come and work at the Department of Interior, I did it because I knew his work and the work of John Echohawk, my brother, and Lucille Echohawk for so long on matters relating to Indian country. I said to myself, God, how are we going to replace, how are we going to replace Larry Echohawk? And so, frankly, through many of your suggestions and uh, through input that we had around the country, somebody said, there is a young man who's uh, the dean of the Uni University of New Mexico School of Law who can throw the long pass, who can make sure that this agenda that we have to change the world for Indian country can get done. He's a Chickasaw. He's from Oklahoma. He's been to Harvard. He was the editor of the Yale Law Journal. He's been all over this country. You start reading through some of the writings that he's done on behalf of Indian country and the work that he's done on behalf of Indian country. I can just tell you this. I know where his heart is. I know where his mind is. And we, the president and I, are so absolutely thrilled that we have a great champion for First Americans and for Alaska Natives in the name of Kevin Washburn, your Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs. I want to thank once again, let's, let's thank Secretary Salazar for his comments, for his presence here.